How do we get at truth? Well, there's basically three ways. Number one, through what we would call human reason and logic. Yeah, I mean, this is all that education is all about, right? Going to school, learning math, learning history, becoming a philosopher, whatever. Okay, and we accept that. That's fine, no problem. Another way that we can learn truth is from tradition. You know, in other words, tradition is a truth that has been passed down, right? And we can also learn from experience. Okay. For example, a five-year-old who's told not to touch the stove because it's hot. You know the rest of that story, don't you? <laughs> they learn for themselves. The experience. Stove hot. Okay. So, now, there's nothing wrong with these things. Uh, Christians in general, and Lutherans specifically, are not anti-intellectual. We value reason. We value... We have the second largest Christian school system in America, second only to the Roman Catholic Church. We have 18 universities and colleges. Our clergy are very well educated. We're not against reason and logic. That's, that's good. But here's the point. Reason and logic, as wonderful they are, are not infallible. Reason and logic are often what? Wrong. Scientific theories and things like that. Yeah. So that's good, but we can't base our eternity on reason and logic. And now, tradition and experience. We Lutherans value tradition. <laughs> right? You come to a, a Lutheran service here at Messiah, it's very traditional. <clears throat> and we value experience. Nothing wrong with experience. Sometimes people can't see me. I'm sitting up in my chair on a Sunday morning and behind the pulpit, kind of hidden, and we're singing a particular song, and maybe a little tear runs down my cheek because it really hits me that day about forgiveness or peace or something. There's nothing wrong with experience or emotion. But these aren't infallible either. Traditions can be what? Wrong. That's what the Lutheran Reformation was all about in the 16th century. The Lutheran Reformation in the 16th century, Martin Luther was saying some, not all, some of the traditions of the church were wrong and they needed to be fixed. And the same thing with experience. Now this is where I always joke, this is probably the first time you'll hear this phrase, but if you have an experience, how do you know it was real or it was a bad can of chili you had the night before? You have a subjective experience, right? Yeah. Somebody comes to me with some sort of weird experience and say, well, how do I know if it was real or not? Yeah. I don't know if it's real or not. In other words, experience can be real and valid or it can be hallucination, just like that person on the psych ward at Harborview says, the kingdom's still there. Well, I'm sorry, it's not there anymore. You know, that's wrong. So we value those things. That's what I want you to hear. But they're not infallible. So we don't judge the Bible by reason or logic, and we don't judge the Bible by tradition or our experience. It's the other way around, because the last source of truth that we have is revelation from God. And by revelation, I don't mean the book of Revelation. Okay, I basically mean the Bible. God reveals himself to us. And I will show you this in future lessons. We would not know God, the one true living God, unless he told us about him. For example, you wouldn't know anything about me unless what? I reveal you. you know, like, you know, I've married two children, right? My education, how long I've been in the ministry. You wouldn't know any of that unless I what? I reveal it to you. And same with you. I don't know you unless you what? You reveal yourself. That's the way it is with God. Now, the point is, in the church, only the Bible is our authority. And this is where we sometimes get into difficulty with the modern world, because they think we're stupid or whatever, you know, we can, because we're always judging everything by the Bible. Reason and logic don't judge the Bible. The Bible judges reason and logic. Tradition and experience don't judge the Bible. The Bible judges tradition and experience. That's what we're trying to say. Now, in the, in the Reformation, I don't know how much you know about the Reformation, there were several Latin phrases, but the Latin phrase that captured this truth during the time of the Reformation was sola scriptura, which means the Bible alone is our authority in the church. So we value those things, but only the third one is authoritative in the church. It has the last word. Comment, question, confusion, no confusion. About that. Please, yes. Yeah. Briefly explain what the Reformation was. Yes, the Reformation was in the 16th century, 1500s in Germany. 
Martin Luther uh, was a Roman Catholic priest and an Augustinian monk. And basically, uh, he was the one that brought about, uh, well, let's put this, before Martin Luther, there was only one church in the West, the Roman Catholic Church. Then with the Reformation, he challenged some of the erroneous doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church and erroneous uh, practices based upon those erroneous teachings. And he was summarily, ex uh, not executed, excommunicated. And that's where the Lutheran Church came from. And then after that, I'm being overly simplistic. The other Protestant churches came about by looking at Martin Luther and saying, Martin, Martin, you got such a good start, but you still have too much Roman Catholic theology hanging on you. We're going to even do more. And that's where all the other Protestant churches came from. That's the Reader's Digest version. OK, anything else before we start getting close here? All right, well, let's look at number 10. How can I personally, in my heart, be convinced that the teachings of Christ in the Bible are really true? John 7, 17, this is Jesus speaking. If any man's will is to do his will, he'll know whether this teaching is from God. They give you a hint here, which you can find in John 6, 29 and 6, 40. To do his will means to believe in Christ. Now, I'll read from this we learn, then I'll give you a better explanation today, because it's kind of hard to see from this passage. From this we learn, if I believe in Christ, I shall know from my own living experience that the teachings of Christ in the Bible are really true. I shall need no further proof. Now let me say it in my own words. What that Bible passage is saying is, I cannot convince anybody in a debate, in a debate, that this is God's word. I can't do that. I can't convince anybody. All I can do is say, that's what this book claims to be. Now here's my point. The only way a person, an individual, is going to accept this book for what it claims to be, the Word of God, is if they have faith in Jesus. If they have faith, don't have faith in Jesus, you'll never convince them this is God's Word. Now let me show you by two silly illustrations the intimate connection between having faith in Christ and believing this is God's Word. Silly illustration number one. Somebody says, I believe with all my heart, <coughs> I get kind of flaky sometimes, that this is God's word. Every single word in here is God's word. I stake my life on it. But I don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. <laughs> well, you see the disconnect? You can't believe this is God's word and not believe that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world because what does this book say? He's the Son of God. See? Okay. Or let's do it the other way. Silly illustration number two. I believe in Jesus Christ as my own Lord and Savior, and He's the only Lord and Savior of anybody else. I believe that with all my heart. But this is just a human book. What do you see the disconnect there? If I believe that Jesus Christ is the only Son of God, and the Savior of the world, and my Savior, and anybody else's Savior, where did I get all the information? Here. So it'd be silly to say, but this is just a human book. Well, no, this is God's book. So the point is, nobody, here's, here's the point. This is not the way it works. I believe God, the Bible is God's word, then I believe in Jesus. That's not the way it works. Let me say it again. It doesn't work this way. I believe the Bible is God's word, and then I believe in Jesus. That's not the way it works. Well, how does it work? I believe in Jesus, and then I believe this is God's word. Okay, I will. I know, it gets confusing. Let me tell you how it doesn't work. Okay, first I'm going to argue and debate with you that this is God's word. Oh, yeah! Is that okay? Well, then I'll believe in Jesus then, if that's God's word. That's not the way it works. Okay? You don't come to faith in Jesus by first believing this is God's word. It works the other way. First, you believe that Jesus is who he says to be, and then you believe that this book. For example, when you, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you don't have to be argued or convinced that this is God's word. Why? Because the Jesus Christ that's so important to you is taught where? Here. So you don't have to sit down. Now, I know you believe in Jesus as God's word, but you know, you're really struggling with this. Is, uh, this is, uh, you really believe in Jesus as your Savior, but you, you're really having a hard time that this is God's word, so let me help you. That never happens. You believe in Jesus? Say, okay, this is God's word. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. See? So it's not Bible, then Jesus. No, it's Jesus, then I accept the Bible as God's word. 